And we're just going to take a walk across your stand. And while we're doing this, I just want to talk about your mission to sustainability. Yeah. Because obviously it's on everybody's mind right now. Everyone's trying to cut costs where they can. They're trying to look after the environment. So how are you at Ceratis actually helping your customers do this? So sustainability, as it says there, Tom, is, is not a goal, it's a mission. That's what we're on, a mission for sustainability. Morning, Just Karen. Through. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> Just squeezing through. So, so obviously you've got your nice, uh, your nice board. Yeah, so we aim to be, as it says, climate neutral by 2025. Uh, we developed our own product uh, classification system, product carbon footprint classification. So a bit like you have with home appliances, a very simple system, but very clever being, you know, some of the <laughs> best ideas are simple ones. So each tool will be classified with a specification of the CO2. So a customer, if he's, if he's part of his, his mission to carbon neutral, can use our information on products and get a classification for all the tools he buys from us. So when he's using the tools, he knows the amount of uh, carbon involved in and. Now you see this, you, you see this a lot on machine tools now, that they're starting to bring in all the energy efficient and so you can see all the data. Because you know what engineers are like, we love data. Yeah. We all love data. But to me, isn't this is the first time this has actually been done on cutting tools. Yeah. So yeah. you can ha now have the data for the, the whole process of your shop floor. Exactly. So you can see, you can select tools on how environmentally friendly basically you want those tools to be with an aim towards your own carbon neutral mission. So on every product classification. So and it's obviously coming more and more, especially from the big customers. They they have their own ambitions for, for carbon neutral and this will help them along that journey. Uh, and why, one, what I wanted to say Tom, why it's really, really important. We produce this example, which is probably good to get a close up of. To produce these four tools here takes 2,000 or two metric tons of tungsten ore. And we'd like to put it into common way of explaining it. So two builder's bags of material. Just to make them to four make tools. Those. So that's why recycling is so important and why we've got to, obviously we don't want to be digging that out of the ground for every four tools. You know, that's, there's a lot of tools that we sell. That's a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> impact on the environment that we can avoid. So our ambition, as it says, is by 2030 to have only less than 5% coming from raw materials. And everything else coming everything from recycling. coming from recycling. And, but then, like you said, it's, it's on the forefront of everyone's minds. Everybody's trying to protect the planet. We, yeah. know, we know things in the past, it's not, it's not really been that way. So Are it's we, great to see uh, a company of your size take the first step and say right guys we know what the the impact of, of making our tools is so let's do something about it exactly and we have to make it commercially attractive to the smaller customers as well so all our customers with vending machines which I said we've got over 500 vending machines out there when we're visiting we will collect the scrap from the customer because we're already visiting we're not adding any extra miles or impact on the environment we're already there collect the material while we're there, the scrap and the plastic, if there's plastic, and then bring it, the guys are backing, the team that are out in the field are backing Sheffield at least once, every month or every other month. They bring it back into Sheffield. We pay the customer a 10% premium on the scrap rate, uh, so they get a, a financial benefit out of it. And then we get our scrap back into the full cycle again. We have a, a recycling company within the group called Stadler, who then are our own recycling company we then bring the recycling back through this, this back to powder again and then back to, but we miss this bit out. And obviously that helps the customer because I know from being on the shop floor, your scrap carbide, it's always like, you always end up with a box of it in a corner and, yeah. you're like, and you can never, like, where do I get rid of it? How do yeah. I get rid of this? Or you always ask somebody coming out, oh, you got any carbide I can buy? And it's like, how do I get, so for you to do that and actually pay the customer, but not charge to do it. Yeah. It's another service benefit, it's another, exactly. it's another reason, basically, any customer with a vending machine, we're already visiting to put the tools away, so why not collect the scrap at the same time, give them a benefit for doing it, because we want the scrap back, that's our ambition, less than 5% by 2030, so we need to get the scrap back, we want the scrap back, we want our own scrap back, because <laughs> we know it's good scrap. Yeah. yeah? 
So well, you know where it's come we from. Know where it's come from. So then we can put it through the cycle again, through the cycle, through the cycle. So for me, it's just a very common sense way along this target towards uh, what we're trying to achieve on the environmental stuff. Well, Tony, I think from me, more than anything, that has been a real eye-opener on the sustainability, but also from the tools you've brought here to Mac. As you can see, the stand he's getting. We, yeah, we, we've, only be, we've only been here 20 minutes, and the, the difference already is getting yeah. busier and busier. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. So thank you for your time and your hospitality, and I hope Tom. you have a great week. Cheers, Tom. Thank you very much. Much appreciated.